in Texas, they're still talking about the little rabbit that had come down from the United States to wipe out the whole state of Texas. Obviously, the rabbit must have been Crusader Rabbit. Or who else would have thought of such a wonderful idea? Now, Crusader Rabbit had big, big ideals, as you can see. And when he wasn't out on a crusade, he was reading about other bold and fearless men. Sir Galahad rescued the fair maiden from the wicked dragon, and they lived happily ever after. He was probably the smallest rabbit you ever did see. And unfortunately, he wasn't endowed with any of the unusual abilities that feature most crusaders. Oh, yeah? Well, could he stop a train in full flight with a touch of his hand? Could he fly through the air with the greatest of ease? No. Did he have x-ray vision? No. As a matter of fact, he was rather nearsighted. Is it... Is it X-G-R-S-T-U-V? The only thing Crusader could do when faced with a crisis was to run. Not a very helpful trait for a Crusader, perhaps, but you'll have to admit... <laughs> He developed it to the highest degree. Well, all this didn't stop Crusader from having big ideals. He saw himself as sort of a knight in shining armor, and he was always trying to help out other people, other causes, like the time he tried to make every day Christmas by nominating Santa Claus for president. Well, to get on with the story, one day Crusader Rabbit was listening to the radio when he heard... And a good, good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North America. Let's go to press. Flash. I just received word that the Texans are chasing all of the jackrabbits out of Texas. Jumping grasshoppers, you should have seen Crusader Rabbit. He was off with a flash, heading for Texas to battle the Texans and protect his cousins, all named Jack. When all of a sudden, he realized... Golly, I might need some help. He knew he could handle the Texans. They were all singers, but he was worried about their horses. Well, as luck would have it, he was right by a circus at the time. So I went in to find someone who could help him. No, I'd never be able to talk to him. No, we'll be using swords, not swallowing them. Then his eye spotted another banner, and he heard the most ferocious sounding roar. <laughs> Tiger must really be a monster. <laughs> this has been a transcribed program. Crusader Rabbit knew he'd found the one to help, so he planned the escape. Tiger, Tiger, it is I, Crusader Rabbit. The Texans are chasing my cousins, the jackrabbits, out of Texas. Here they are. And you've got to help me, Tiger. Will you come with me to battle the Texans? Yeah, I'll do it. And so, having persuaded the tiger to join his forces, Crusader Rabbit and his newly found friend were off to Texas to battle the Texans. hero crusader rabbit last time he had just received word that the state of texas was planning a campaign to rid herself of every last jackrabbit within her boundaries well you can imagine how that set with our boy crusader he was hopping mad and fit to be tied why jeepers every one of those prairie bunnies was a beloved relative of his nothing closer than a 32nd cousin twice removed perhaps but Crusader and his loyal companion, Rags the Tiger, considered themselves brothers to anyone in distress. Believe me, those Texas jackrabbits were in distress right up to their necks. This could mean but one thing to our two idealists, war. And as you can see, our lads were well prepared, for they had learned long ago that the pen is mightier than the sword. 
However, an army needs more than mere weapons to wage a war. Organization is the important thing. And so, our story opens today on Crusader Rabbit. What's that? Uh, beg your pardon, sir. General Crusader Rabbit, hard at work organizing his approaching campaign. And here is Private Tiger doing some organizing of his own. Day one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, three, three. In fact, Rags did such a good job of organizing the enlisted personnel that the general soon promoted him to sergeant. Then, of course, there was the matter of supplies. Carefully, Crusader checked every piece of equipment. One camp stove, cream puffs, foot locker, canoe, cream puffs, sleeping bags, radio, and cream puffs. Check. Sergeant Tiger was soon in finding out that an army truly does travel on its stomach. Well, at last all was ready. And so, with a hearty... Forward march! The pair set off for far off Texas. On and on they went. Up the Chisholm Trail, across the Old Western Trail, down the Goodnight Loving Trail, along the Shawnee Trail, then the Bozeman Trail, up the Chisholm Trail, along the... Say, wait a minute, boys. Don't you know where Texas is? <laughs> Get the guy. Don't we know where Texas is? <laughs> Golly, that's right. We don't. Just a minute. I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Uh, this dictionary will tell us. Let's see now. T, termite, territory, terra, Texas. Here it is, Texas. It's right in between Terra and Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving? Oh, boy, I love Thanksgiving. Turkey and stuff. And so the two hardy knights happily continued their crusade. Up the Chisholm Trail, across the Old Western Trail, down the Goodnight Loving Trail, along the Shawnee Trail, then the Bozeman Trail, up the Chisholm Trail, and all along the way, enthusiastic crowds would cheer them on. At last, they came to the Great White Plains, the final barrier between them and Texas. Without a backward glance, the two brave warriors set out across this wasteland. Alas, if they but knew, there's not a drop of water out there for over 200 miles. You said it, Bob. Nary a single drop. You won't want to miss the next episode, folks. I calls it the Vulture's Dinner. You get it? <laughs> <laughs>